What's good, everybody? It's your brother, Mad Black, the most dangerous and the most toxic black man on the internet, and I am black up in your face again with some more pro-black commentary. So I want to talk a little bit about the comments that I saw given by Lenny Kravitz, and, you know, he made some comments very recently where he said that he felt you know, <clears throat> he felt bad that he had never been really accepted or appreciated by the black media or, you know, black media and award shows. And he went on to clarify it by saying that, you know, I've never been invited to a, a BET award or a Source Awards or anything like that. And he, he feels bad because he's a, a black musician. And he always felt that maybe he should be more appreciated by a black audience, or at least on the the upper end of things. So like the the, the media people in you know uh, black entertainment, like radio, TV, and and whatnot, that they should appreciate him more, right? And <clears throat> I saw the comments, and I, I did see him get a little bit of backlash for this. You know, you had some people saying, well. Uh, they don't like Lenny's type of music, so why would he expect to be on any type of black award show? And I want to talk about this a little bit because this is this is actually a little bit more of a nuanced conversation. It's not an either or type deal, or it's not you gotta take one side or the other. Because in a way, both sides of this argument are correct. And some people are actually embellishing or you know taking things a little bit too harshly and we're not getting to the core of the issue here okay so first of all just let me say this I am a Lenny Kravitz fan I love his music okay I can if I can give you guys a little uh, flashback to the early 90s anyone remembers the the dare program you know the 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 uh, you know, teaching kids against, you know, drugs and violence and whatnot. I remember that a young me won an award from the D.A.R.E. program. I won one of their art contests at my school. And it was it was actually a bunch of schools that were in the contest. But my, my picture won second place out of all the schools in our area. And I had to get an award. and But my mom couldn't take me to the award ceremony because she had to work. So my older sister drove me there. And while we were on the way there, she had Lenny Kravitz's second studio album playing in the car uh, on cassette tape. It was the Mama Said album, right? And I'm sitting there listening to this. I'm like, man, this is great. Who is this? And after we got home from the award ceremony that night, I asked, could I borrow that tape so I could dub it? You know, everyone remembers like dubbing cassette tapes, <laughs> right? And I dubbed just a lot of the songs that I liked on there. And I just kind of listened to them like while I'm, while I'm drawing or whatever. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I, from that point on, I was a Lenny Kravitz fan. I, I love the Are You Gonna Go My Way album, the Circus album. Uh, album five is probably my favorite one that came out right as I was getting out of high school, going into college. So I'm a Lenny fan, and I can tell you that his music, while there is a lot of rock music on there, he does have a lot of like R&B songs in his catalog, so it's not just all rock music. Anyone who's a Lenny Kravitz fan knows that. In fact, uh, one of the very first times I saw what Lenny Kravitz looked like, he was actually on BET. I think they played one of his videos on Video Soul. It was the song... It ain't over till it's over, right? And that that song, anyone, everyone knows that song because it was very popular at that time, and it did have more of an R and B type feel. So I think black people are more familiar with him from there, or at least during that time, anyway. But yes, he is a a, a rock star, a guitar player, so he does add a lot of that to his music, <clears throat> and I don't see anything wrong with that because that that's black music. Rock music is black music. It's only because of the music industry I feel that uh, we have been 
conditioned to think that only certain types of music are for certain types of people. You see what I'm saying? I think the music industry very much so has conditioned people to think that only white people can listen to rock music and black people have to listen to just R&B and rap music. We have, and we have to stay in our bubbles. And if you come out of that bubble, people are going to look at you weird. And I know this for my, from my own experience being a black kid who listened to rock music and heavy metal and punk music. I know that you know other black kids look at you weird if you like other types of music. And like I said, they've been conditioned. So I don't really blame them for that. Cause I know just how you know conditioned we are. I mean, I love rap music too. I, I I was just I was right there with the you know the original Wu Tang mixtapes and listening to Nas on the basketball court. Um, I remember when Cannabis had songs for when he first came out before he became big. Same thing with DMX. So I I was there for all that stuff. So I I love rap music. I love hip hop, but I love Lenny Kravitz too. I have no you know, problem with it. And like I said that. Listen to that Mama Said album, that was like uh, a breath of fresh air for me. You know what I'm saying? Just listening to something different. And I, I enjoyed that album. And, and, you know, there was some connection there because I also listened to Guns N' Roses at the time. And the guitar player Slash helped to write some of the songs on Lenny Kravitz's album. That album Mama Said, that, that song, Always on the Run, that riff is from Slash. And I think he even plays the guitar solo on that song. So... You know, there's a connection there. So I, you know, I was very much into what Lenny Kravitz was putting out there as far as his music goes. Now, you know, when you have people that would say that, you know, Lenny doesn't fit into the music that black people should be listening to. Like I said, I understand black people have been conditioned to thinking only one genre or two genres of music is the music we're supposed to be, quote unquote, listening to. I understand that, and it's dictated to us by the music industry. The music industry industry decides what's hot, what's popular, what we should be listening to, and it's pumped through us. To, it used to be through the radio, but now it's through social media, where they tell us these are the songs you're supposed to like, and this is the type of music you're supposed to listen to. So when you have someone uh, like Lenny Kravitz becomes like an oddity almost, the fact that he's a black person who still does rock music i mean there's nothing if he had existed during like the 60s or early 70s there would have been no diff no difference you know he would not feel so out of place but because the music industry decides what types of what genres of music people are supposed to listen to now all of a sudden black people are not supposed to listen to lenny kravitz and i think that's a shame right and you know, they do this through their their control of these award shows. So at this point, this is where I feel like Lenny Kravitz is wrong and that the fact that he says, you know, I've never been accepted at these black award shows or black media. There is no black media, Lenny. This is BET and the source or whatever. All that is controlled by white folks. Black people have no control over any of that stuff. Okay, so... You calling it the black media is almost a misnomer. Yeah, it's geared towards black people, but it's not owned or operated by black people. You understand that? So th this is not, this. there is no such thing as quote unquote black media, at least, you know, not anymore anyway. There was a grassroots black media before at some point, but most of that stuff has been bought out or taken over by these major corporations. And that's why music is so dulled down and this is why music is so terrible these days not just in rap and hip-hop but pop music is shitty now too you can't i don't i don't even want to listen to rock and, and pop music anymore either because that's that's just as bad as the hip-hop and the truth be told uh lenny kravitz should be happy that he's not on any of these shows you know <laughs> I, I if i'm an artist who has any type of like standards or integrity about myself I'll be damned if I want to be on the BET Awards or the Source Awards these days. You know, do you, like like seriously, Lenny, do you want to be on a show like the last BET Awards show, really? Do you want to be there where you got a bunch of ratchet black females in the aisles with no shoes on, twerking their musty butts, talking about my, my coochie is pink and my booty hole is brown? Is that is that what type of crowd you want to sit in, right? 
Is that where you want to be at? So I, I'd be glad to not be invited to any of that trash. And if I was, even if I was a rapper, I probably wouldn't go. I don't care if I was nominated for an award or not. You know, I don't want to be there for that nonsense. So he should be happy that he's not invited to some of these black media events because it's, it's the worst of the worst at this point, the way this, the, this white demonic culture pushes on black people as our, what's supposed to be our quote-unquote media. So, you know, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on this subject because I, I feel that as someone who is actually a fan of his music and can tell you that there is plenty of music that's not just rock music within his catalog. I mean, the dude has several albums, so there's lots of stuff in there that you can jam to that's not just just rock music. But even the rock stuff that he makes it has some funk to it. So I you know I appreciate that in that regard. But you know, just don't think that just because something is a certain type of music or something has more guitars or whatever that that means you can't listen to it. All right. Parliament Funkadelic is one of the greatest rock groups of all time, but people don't classify them as that. But they're basically a rock group. If you actually really listen to their music, Parliament is a, is a, a rock group. Bigger than any of like the Rolling Stones or anything else. They, they should have been, they should be like honored in that same category, but they're not just because they're black, right? And people use their, their funk beats for hip hop and whatnot. So people have taken hip hop has taken them in more than the rock community has. Right? So, you know, there's a lot of weird things that go on when it comes to our music and the things that we've created for American society where these people will take our music and then dictate to us what we're supposed to like. And I I've I've never been a person who went for that. No one can tell me what I'm supposed to like. I'll like what I want to and I'll listen to what I want to. Okay, and I'll enjoy what I want to, but you know this sick society tries to categorize and and pigeonhole things and create genres and everything else and give everything a little name, so that way you have to follow behind this and this this type of music is for you Negroes, this type of music is for you white folks, this type of music is for you Latinos, and no one is supposed to meet in between. So it's. Basically, all the music created here in this United States is black music, so I don't see what you should, shouldn't be ashamed to listen to any of it. So you folks let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. I'd like to hear your opinions on this. And this is Mad Black, and I will be back with my foot on a devil's back.